G'day folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to solve this Terraminx. I am not going to do the entire solve. While I would enjoy doing that, you'd get bored out of your brains. What I am going to show you is exactly what techniques you'll need for each part of it. So what we're going to do is reduce firstly the centres to a single centre on each face. We're going to reduce the edges to a single edge. Then we're going to place the edges, then place the corners. Uh, that's essentially the whole solve. It takes a long time, but that's it. Now you'll notice here, this is a stickerless piece, not deliberately, but I've worked out this is a white-green piece, so if I forget when I get to it, someone remind me. Now, the first technique that you're going to need is to reduce centres, and you can see that white piece is always coming off as well. Reduce the centres. Now, the way to reduce the first centre is the same as the way to reduce the last centre, but obviously the last centre, there's a lot less space to work with. So I'm going to show you how to reduce the first centre, and you'll be able to do pretty much all the rest, and then I'm going to come down to the last two centres that aren't reduced, and reduce them as well. So how do we start? Well, you'll notice here that we've got a white piece touching that centre piece, that white sort of inner, inner edge, if you like. What I'm going to do is work my way around, and I'm going to place a corner edge, corner edge, corner edge, and then lastly, corner edge corner. That's the technique. So I've got one here already. I've got to go and make on some of the other faces, and this is why the first one is fairly simple, and the last one is much harder. I've got to make a corner edge where the corner is on the left of the edge. So you'll see here that there's a corner edge, but the corner is on the right of the edge. I'd like to get... Uh, somewhere where the corner is on the left. So I look over here and I can see that I can turn. Now that's not the right corner actually, that's the one that's that line, not that line. So I'm looking for something like that corner. I can turn that up to make myself a corner edge. Now I have made a corner edge corner, but I don't really want that yet. And it's going to be confusing, so I'm just going to turn that off. Now that I've got that, I can turn that down into position. Now I started with this edge. I'm going to just get that one off so as not to confuse the issue. Started with that edge. I've placed corner edge. I'm next going to go and look to place corner edge there. So again I've got to make a corner edge on some of the other faces. Um, there's an edge. Do I have a corner piece that I can stick here? For example, what I'm going to do firstly is actually just turn that face so I can not disturb the white when I'm working. Let's find, let's find an appropriate corner. Uh, there's an appropriate corner there, so um, in fact either of them will work. No, they won't, just that one will work. I'll bring that down and I want to place it next to that edge. So I'm going to turn that face again, bring it down, and I've created the corner edge. Again, don't be deceived by that one there. Now I need to turn that face and put it down. Again, just for clarity, I'm going to turn that off. So I started with this edge, put in the corner edge, put in the corner edge. I've got a next corner edge to do. So again, I go and find an edge. There's a couple here, and I'm going to make a corner to go with them. There's a corner. Now I can just turn that on because it won't disturb anything down here because we haven't done that yet. So I'll turn that on, make the corner edge. Where's that got to go? It's got to go to here. I'll turn that face, put it down, and that will then leave me with the corner edge corner still to do. So let's turn them off. Go and make the corner edge corner. Well, there's one of the corners, so I'll just turn that to that face and put it on. And I'll go and find the other corner, which could be anywhere. Yeah, here it is. And let's have a look. If I turn it to there, yeah, I'm going to turn it up to that position. I don't want to disturb what I've done here, so I'll just put it like that. I can turn that up and I've made my corner edge corner and now I can just turn that straight into position. 
Now that's created part of that reduced center. I now need to basically pretend that that is my center and do exactly the same thing for the other part. Now what I'm going to do um, is quite quickly go through that and then you'll know exactly what you can do for the rest of the centers and the only issue will be as you're doing them is that with this last one when I put in that last piece there I didn't have to think about other faces. Well when you've started doing faces or centers you will have to think about other centers and you'll just need to um, not just push the other ones out. So I might cut back in just to show you one example of that. But here we've started with a, an edge. We're going to now go and find, um, in fact, yeah, we're going to, instead of starting with an edge, we're going to start with an edge corner corner to do that. And then we're going to do corner corner edge corner like that. Build it up around corner corner edge corner. Uh, corner corner edge corner and then the last thing will be corner corner edge corner corner like that so the same sort of technique so let's go ahead and find first of all uh, we'll find this little edge here we'll find some corners that can be placed onto it well the first thing I've got a corner there that will go I need to get a corner there now I I'm looking at it going that corner is actually belonging over there so I'm going to turn that off just that slice um, turn it round to there and put it down you'll notice I turned that face but it didn't matter because it's just the whole face that's turning I don't care about that outer corner for now but I do want this one here and I can get it By turning that face like that. Okay, so I've got corner, corner, edge, corner that I can now uh, put in to begin with. And so I might put that in. I'm going to put it into uh, this slot here, I think. I think that'll be the easiest because it'll push that other one out. Ah, in fact, I didn't even need that corner, did I? So I'm going to take that out. That will confuse things. So what I needed to begin with was just corner, edge, corner, which I've got. Now I'm going to be going and making corner, corner, edge, corner, like that. So I'd go and find another one. Here's one over here. Um, here's a corner on the right. I've uh, got a corner here that I can use. Looking for a corner that would just be on the left there. So have I got one down here? I do. There's one. You can kind of tell that as you turn it around. You can bring it up. And then we've got it. And now that needs to be placed next to that one that we've just done. So we just turn it up. There it is in position. The next one we'll place will be that one. Now I've got my edge, don't care about that corner at the moment. However, I can use that corner to put it over here. So I can turn that off, occasionally it's better to go the other way, just in the turning of it, put that corner there. Now what have I got? Um, I've actually got that corner which I don't need, that's the same position as that one. Got some corners up here which I can use. Um, so I'll probably turn both of them down like that. So corner, corner, edge. Just need a corner that goes there and that's a corner that will work actually. So if I grab that, take it off the face, then I can bring it down like that and I've created that. Where does this one go? straight up. Slight alignment issues there. There we go. You can see this center is starting to build up quite nicely. Okay, here's my next edge. And there's the fifth edge. I won't worry about that yet. Let's grab I can put that corner on. Another corner there which will go next to it. 
Now I'm just looking around this line there. I've got that corner, which I won't need yet. What about coming from this way? I'm going to have to move some corners. I just really need to move a corner into that position now. So let's see if I can find that corner. There it is. So I can grab that and turn it, put it on, turn the white face to get the next part ready, rotate that up, and that means I'm now ready for my corner, corner, edge, corner, corner thing which is what I'm now going to do. So there's, there's the edge. Uh, here's a corner that I can just take off. And when I turn that up to there, there you go, I can place that one in. Uh, where's our other white corners? You can see here that it kind of takes a fair while doing the white just because the corners could be anywhere. Um, as you do your faces, and I recommend that you work your way around like all this and then do the upper ones, the corners can't be that far. They can really only be, look at this sticker, my goodness, that really wants to come off. They can only really be um, in very close faces. So at the moment, I'm struggling to find the corners. Now I've got one over here, and I think I can turn that one up to there I can. Got another one that I saw. Ah, here's one. What can I do with that one? In fact, what I'll do, so I'll put this in. Ah, that's not even going to affect the white face. That one's in. There'll be another corner somewhere. You've probably already seen it. Ah, there it is. Okay. I'm going to keep my finger where it is. Um, turn it around to a reasonable position. Now, I will actually, I don't need to do this, but I'm going to, um, going to do it now just to show you what I was talking about with pushing out pieces. If I tried to turn that white corner up, it's going to knock out that. So what I would need to do, and this is how you'll place these parts on the subsequent faces without destroying bits that you've already done. I'm going to push out that white. It makes that, so I then turn that off, turn the face, and then bring that back. That is it. Simple as that. That's the kind of thing you'll do. Um, and then we can turn this face, put that up, and you can see that we've successfully reduced one center. That's right. No one said this thing would be quick. So we've reduced one center. What you can do now is go ahead and reduce all the others like that. When you come to reduce the yellow, you'll again start with a yellow piece here and then make corner edge, corner edge, corner edge, corner edge, corner. And then you'll do the same thing for the outer parts until you've got the yellow center perhaps. And I would recommend that you work your way around. And uh, I would say before you know it, but that certainly won't be the case. It'll take quite a while. You'll eventually get up to perhaps the last three faces. The third to last face it can still be done in the same way. It's just when you get to the last two. So I'm going to cut back in in those last two faces, show you how to complete the last centers. Okay, well, we've got 10 centers done. We're looking to do the last two. And in fact, if we just do the last one, the 12th will also be done. So let's go about making the green. We're going to make the inner parts in exactly the same way. We'll start with one here and we're going to place doubles next to it. Um, so you can see I've sort of got some bits done here, but I'm just interested in um, getting a double on its own, first of all. Uh, so probably this stage, I'll turn, I'll think about, yeah, consider that one a double initially and turn that down into position and then replace it. This piece here is not actually part of the triple, so I want that to be connected to something else. So let's initially see if we can get that off and connect it uh, to something. Now, if we can't connect it to something else, that's okay, but if we actually can, we can put this one up here. Uh, to turn both of them back down. Okay, let's take stock and see where we are. 
I was attempting to connect this one to one of these pieces up here. Now what's happened is that has come up with this piece, so it's actually already connected, so I almost don't need to do that. So what I am going to do is connect this one here down to there. So bring that down, turn the face and put that back. So just looking to make the inners at the moment. Now what have we got now? We've got um, we can talk about this double here and we'll put that double down, replace it with this piece Alright, now we've got to make the last triple and you can see that's the piece, the two bits are there. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing we want to do is probably turn that up and replace it with this lone pink piece here. Alright, now that automatically has come and attached it to one of them. And we've got to grab this piece. We actually want to put this piece in here. So how are we going to do that? Well, this to here Oh, sorry. Yeah, this to here to here. In other words, we'll turn that around, bring that up, and put it down. Now that is ready now to be attached to these two. So now we can attach it, turn the face, and replace it with a pink. And what I probably could have done then is just turn it straight back onto this line because now I'm going to turn that, put it back, and that inner part is done. So that is really just the same as doing it as we've been doing it in the past. It's just more restricted because we've only got this face to work with. Alright, now you'll see that the inner centre there is done obviously as well. Now the next stage is to kind of do the same thing but in fact instead of um, making quartets, so what we've been doing previously is looking to make this piece, the two beside it and one next to it. Well we're just going to make triplets at this stage. So, let's go ahead and actually make triplets and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing is I can see that I've got one triplet sitting there already. Um, if I turn this face, I've got two pieces. I need that piece there before I start. Now I can see that there is a piece sitting right here. So let's take that off and we might even replace that with that empty pink row. Okay, so I've got a piece that's up the top that's ready to go down and match with this one. That's the first step, have a piece there. The next step is to make sure that this piece here is pink, or the other colour. And that is indeed the case. You'll see why as we do this. So what we do is we turn the two outer slices. I'm not counting this at all, so these two in here. You can see it's attached. Then I'm gonna turn the front face and there it is on the, the outer one. I just turned that one back at the moment. There's the piece that we said needed to be pink. Now I'm going to turn the front face back. And there's that piece. And now I can go and push that, just the inner slice, up to the top. And you can see that that has made that there. So we've got this one done, that one done. Let's put another one. Uh, you can see that all of them are down here, all needing parts attached to them. Let's have a look. We've got a green part here ready to attach and that's pink. So we do exactly the same thing. Attach it, turn the front face, bring the completed part up, return the front face and bring the inner part up. That's it. It's as simple as that. Um, let's go and put this one down in here again so that we can complete that triplet. And because we now need to attach something to the right, we will need a piece on the right. And we don't want to use that one. That's already attached, so we'll use this one. Again, we've got to have a pink there. We're ready to go. So both faces down. Turn the front face and take it off. Return the front face. And now return the inner slice. Okay, so there's that one done, that one done. That one there is done. We've got these two down here still to go. So let's have a look. That's set up. There's a pink piece there. We need to find um, 
Yep, we need to find that green piece there ready to attach to it. So it doesn't matter that we've got this here, as long as that is a green needing to go there, and this one is a pink, away we go. You can see that it is actually an algorithm if you want to call it that. It's just you don't even need to think about it as an algorithm. Now I'm going to put this one back in here. So what will we do? We'll turn that one off. Okay, now I need a piece for the right, which looks like this little rogue piece here. Uh, so that's ready. That's pink. Away we go. What have we got now? One done, two done, three done, four done. Just got this last one here. So, where are our pieces? Well, we've got... Uh, we certainly... That's on the outside, as is that, as is that. So the pieces that we're actually looking for are these two here. So we're going to need to put them up to the top. Um, so we'll replace we'll probably replace them here. So in other words, I want this in this position and I'll replace it with this part. Okay, now, that now means that we've got these two pieces ready to attach to this one. So we'll do that same thing, that's pink again. And there's our newly joined one. So again, we're going to take that um, down and replace that with a pink piece. And you can see the pink is starting to take shape as well. Okay, now we've got to get that one on and that piece is right there. That's pink, ready to go. All right, now we've completely made triplets now. We also happen to have a couple of fivelets and a quartet. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're kind of going to start in the same way. We're going to probably initially, I'll get this out and I'll just put a pink one into its place. Now, obviously, if, if I count that down there as a triplet, then that as a quartet, then what I'd like to do is attach this little piece somehow to another triplet to make a quartet, if I can. So that's the first thing I'll consider doing. Now, it may not be incredibly easy and obvious, but we're going to give it a go anyway. And in fact, um, what we can do is turn that piece, we're going to push this one out, turn that piece up there, uh, in fact, that has actually made a quintet, so I don't even need to do that. What I do need to do is, yeah, um, because I've started with the triplet, which was here, I've got my quartet, I actually need to make this attach to another triplet. So let's, in fact, turn that around, put that one up there. Now, you'll see what it's done is it's knocked off that piece there. So that was a quintet. That's okay. I'm going to knock off that piece, make myself a quartet, turn it down, and put it back into position. Now, what do we have now? We've got a quartet here, which is the wrong sort of orientation. We've got a couple of other quartets up here. So let's first of all, uh, and we've got a lone piece, which can be attached in a minute. Let's first of all get the quartet correctly oriented. So to do that, what I'm going to do is push this one down out of the way and then I'm going to turn the face like that so that when I bring it back, it's actually attached. I'll just align that. It's attached correctly there to leave those four and these four. Now I've got a rogue piece here, which you'll know that I want to attach to make a quintet. So I'll attach that up to there. 
replace this with this pink outer row. This is pretty much how all of these go. It's just a matter of thinking your way through um, getting from the triplets to the quartets to a quintet. So now we've just got a quartet and a quintet to place. So we know that the quartet can go down to that position and be replaced by that. As such. And the very last quintet will move its position up. Turn the quintet onto its position and turn it down and those centers are completely done. So that's definitely the hardest part of doing the centers. It just takes a little bit more thinking but the techniques there should get you through. Well to do the edges what we're going to be doing is reducing edges so that all five of these pieces are the same color. So let's just start with this pink blue and um, what we've got to do is find the other four pink blue pieces. So I can see one of them's here and I want to just turn out of faces and what I'll be wanting to do, it doesn't matter where I go initially, I want to have the pink so that it's ready to roll down to there. So I'm actually going to put this pink blue to that position. You can see that it knocks out that pink blue. So instead of just turning it there, I'll turn it with an edge piece series just to keep that pink blue intact. Now what I've done is place it so that I can bring it together like that when I need to. So that's one of them in place on the inner uh, line. Got to find the next one. There's one there. Uh, this one, you can see that it sort of belongs over on that line. So what I might do is just turn it around the back here, bring it up to there, and what I'll be looking to do is actually to place it here. So to place it there, I'll just move it out onto an adjoining face and then once again turn it onto there. I've got a pink blue here that I don't want to displace and so I'll turn it onto there uh, with an edge piece series. Okay, so what have we got now? We've got this pink blue ready to turn like that and we've got this pink blue ready to turn like that. You can see what's going to happen. We need to get the others. Now I did see one up here somewhere. Probably lost it now. Uh, there's one around there. So we'll bring this one back. Turn it around towards where it needs to go. And we want it to be in one of these lines here. Now you can see that it's the inner one and I've got to have it over onto this part here. Now I can, it looks like, I can just turn it straight up because there's no other pink pieces. So I can just turn that up into position and that's now ready to roll down to attach there. And so then there'll be one more pink blue piece. And initially, it takes quite a while to do these because you're just searching for the pieces. Um, and then you get lost in your orientation of where you're actually supposed to be putting them. So it does take a while. Where is the last pink? Oh, there it is. Okay. So that one there has got to be placed and I don't have to do them all above, I can do them down here, so I might even do that. Um, turn that one. Yeah, I don't want it there, I actually want it on this here. So I can turn that. Now when you think you've got them all, you just check, that's gonna go up to there. Uh, where's the other pink blue that I had? That's vanished. I've accidentally turned it off. This is why you check. Let's turn that one back so that's ready. And on the other side, that's ready and that's ready. Okay, so when you've got them all ready, you turn them in together. Uh, this one's got to come up. All right, so you turn the faces, the slices, and obviously we've messed up centers. That's to be expected. We have created a complete uh, reduced pink blue edge and what we do now is take it out onto an adjoining face just by up and then replace it with something that's not yet done and turn that down. That's it, three moves to do that. Then we put our centers back. That's not difficult, you just get guided by the colors. Okay, all centers are back and you can see now we have that pink blue edge completely reduced. Now that is pretty much all we do until the last two or three. So I'm gonna continue doing that 
I'm going to cut back in at the last two or three. All right, well, we're now down to the last three edges. You can see that one, that one, and that one. They're unreduced, so we've got white, red, white, yellow, and blue, yellow. The way that I like to do this is to keep things as simple as possible. So what I'm going to do is focus on making one edge, and I'm going to perhaps use this one for now as my edge on another face to help me do it. I'll show you what I mean. As an example, let's focus on making the blue-yellow edge. And if I make the blue-yellow edge, I can see that the center, the yellow-blue center, is there, or the center of the edges. And there's a yellow-blue piece that can go up next to it. So for now, I'm just going to move that yellow-blue piece next to it. I'm now going to take this one out and replace it with this third piece, just like I would normally do for any of the edges. That's done. Let's put it back and see what we've got. Uh, we've now got those two yellow blues together. I'm going to continue doing that. So I'm going to find another yellow blue piece. There's the other yellow blue and it's actually next to another one which is fantastic. So I want to get the blue yellows. And if I can, if I just turn that straight back, you can see those two blue yellows now will go next to that piece, which is exactly what I want. There's my third piece that I'm going to use. There we go. I'm going to put that up. I'm going to take it out, replace it with this third piece. Bring the centers back and take stock. Now what have I got? Four of them done. I need another one. There's the other one. So we're going to have to move that other one around and set it up in the right position. And so you can see the yellow is going to come around to there, which is what I want. So I'll just turn that out of the way first. Put that one into position and put them back. So now that yellow blue is ready to match up with there. One, two, where's the other piece? Here it is over here. So it's on that face, it's ready to be used. I'll bring them together. Bring it up to that face, align it, turn it, replace it, and return centers. And you can see that with a really a minimum of fuss, that third to last edge has been made. And now it gets a little bit more interesting, but not a whole lot. So what we'll do now is concentrate on just putting pieces next to pieces. So we're not going to try and make the second to last edge as a standalone thing. We're going to try and match pieces with pieces. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, as an example, I've got the red whites here next to its sort of centery edge piece. I see I've got a red white up here that I could bring to that position. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to put that in its position. I'll have to turn it off in order to bring this one back. Now, I'm going to move that red white down next to the other two. Now, I can't replace that with anything out here because there is nothing. So what I'm going to do is flip the piece. I'm going to completely reverse that piece. And to do that, very simple, just turn it so that this is facing up towards another face that we don't care about. And we're going to take it out and replace it with something else. This in this case. Okay, here it is here. Now we're going to put it back down, and to reverse it by putting it back down, we're going to turn its position up onto that face first, then turn it onto the position, then place it back down. And for completeness, you can turn that as well. When we turn back and have a look at what's going on, we'll see that this used to be red, white, red, white, red, white. It's now flipped. It's white, red, white, red, white, red. Let's put the centers back and see what's happened. We've got those white red pieces all together. And we've got this, this one actually is also together. So we've got this rogue yellow white piece. Now we're going to try and do something with the yellow pieces. So we're just going to leave that for now and see what can we do with the yellow pieces. Well, we can certainly bring this white yellow up to that position, just that white yellow up to that position to match with that white yellow. We'll turn it up and we're going to reverse this piece in the same way. There 
Here we go. Let's turn that back down. And miracle of all miracles, you'll see that uh, having done that, just having gone and matched pieces up, it's actually left us with that yellow-white edge completely done, and it's made the white-red edge. And it really is not any harder than that. So if you try and focus on one particular edge and just make that edge at all costs, it'll be too hard. If you just try and match individual pieces with other individual pieces, and you see we did that with some white reds, we then said, hey, let's match a yellow-white, what will happen is this will happen. And all your edges will be reduced with, a, again, a minimum of fuss, just reversing the edge piece. And that indeed has completed all of the edge reducing. That now leads us to the final phase of the solve, which is to really place the edges and the corners. So when I say final phase, I mean solve the reduced, it's essentially a reduced megaminx now. So we want to solve it however we'd solve a megaminx. What I'm going to do here is just place all the edges first and then go and place all the corners. So placing all the edges uh, is just a matter of turning them in. So if we want, for example, to place the white blue, we would turn that on and then turn it onto its position. And uh, I'll do probably most of this if you know how to solve a megaminx. Uh, you can certainly skip to the end to see the end game, but I'll probably include most of what's going on. I would then say, well, the white green needs to go onto that position. Where's another white? White red is floating over there. In fact, look, I probably won't, just for the length of the video, I'm not going to do all of the edges. What I'm going to do is probably get the white face and one or two edges there and then skip through and that white yellow has got to go one further so I'll just move it to there okay and skip through to the more interesting part of the Megaminx edges so that's uh, the white face done I would then for a Megaminx turn it up and actually start placing edges down here now I've got two methods on my channel and on my site for solving a Megaminx. One of them is edges first, all edges first and then all corners. The other is a layer by layer method and that's where you basically build it up from the bottom doing the whole lot as you go up. For this I'm just probably going to do uh, edges first because it's a little less complicating when you're trying to do it on a Terraminx puzzle. Let's stick to the main basics of how to get it to this point. So I'm going to go ahead and complete all the edges and leave myself with the corners. I'll just skip through to the last bit of the edges. Alright, well here we are down to the last six edges. We've got that one in the middle. We've got the five on top. All the other edges have been placed. And so I'm going to sort of use this one to help place these ones. And I'm going to do the one at the back first and then these two on the sides, leaving myself with three edges here to deal with at the end. So the one at the back is a grey orange so in this case I can just grab that grey orange turn it round into its position that's pretty simple next I might look for this grey blue and that's sitting here so I can use this piece and cycle those three pieces that's placed the grey blue next will be the grey green now that's over here and it's flipped so I can't sort of just turn it around like that. Because it's flipped I'm going to place it down into this middle section like that. That's sitting down here now and it, it means that I know the grey has got to come up like that. So I'm going to turn its position then turn the grey up then undo those moves. And that's placed place that grey green it also happens to have placed the grey pink and these other two are in position but flipped. Now if you don't get that scenario what you'll get is one, two, three that just need to cycle home like we've just been doing. But if you do have this scenario all you need to do is grab one of them so that remember they'll be in these three positions. So grab either of these ones, turn it onto the correct edge and then move the other one undo those moves so that's your first edge piece series 
And what that does is take them out of position. And now you have the three cycle I was talking about. And in that three cycle, if you look at the edges, two of them will end up needing to go into their position correctly oriented and one will need to go in its position not correctly oriented. As an example of what I mean, here's the grey yellow. That needs to go up there and if I turn it up, yep, that's correct. If I turn the grey pink to here, yep, that's correct. If I turn the pink yellow to here, you can see, oh no, that's incorrect. So there'll be one of those pieces like that. You identify that piece and you say that's got to go into that position. In order to put it onto that position, correctly oriented, you need to turn its position up to the other piece. Now turn it onto its position and undo the moves. And you can see having done that, that has put the last three edges into place. All the edges are now completed. We're down to the really final stage of the solve which is to place the corners and because I've done an edges first method here um, corners last I'm going to have corners all over the shop that's okay my general procedure is for placing a face at a time and sort of working around faces so that at the end I've got all the corners in proximity to where I need them now what I'm going to use for this is a corner piece series and this one is just for the mega mix so it behaves the turns are really exactly the same turns as on a cube but the pieces it moves are just slightly different because obviously there's five pieces on an upper face so on a cube normally we would have four corners and on a cube in fact let me just demonstrate that on a cube if we look at that if I did a corner piece series it would involve those three corners now on this puzzle I hold it like that as I'm going to do it's actually going to involve one two three those three corners for the same moves are the corners that will be affected and the same principles apply you're looking for a corner that will roll down an edge if you've never heard of the corner piece series you don't know what I'm talking about have a look in the description of any of my videos and there's a link to a video on the corner piece series great little algorithm so what I'm going to do is just find a corner that can go into position or roll into position and if I can start with the whites that's great but if not it doesn't matter here's one let's start with the yellow face yellow orange green you can see that uh, this corner will roll down into its correct position like that it'll roll along an edge now in this case instead of having the corners go this way and have a roll down like that we've got a roll on the other side so we'll be starting with the mirror corner piece series. So it's going to move these three corners. Uh, just the mirror moves. So to do this, to cycle those three corners around in that direction, here's what we do. Up anti-clockwise and then we turn our left face away from us. Up clockwise, turn our right face away. Up anti-clockwise, Return our left face, up clockwise, return our right face. Very simple, very symmetrical, and you'll see that corner is now placed in its position. Even better, the edges have been untouched. So that's the beauty of it. It just moves around corners, doesn't touch your edges. And I'm going to find one that I can do with a standard corner piece series, as in not the mirror. So I'll just find any corner. Uh, that will go into place perhaps across a diagonal if I need to let's have a look here that one would actually go in fact let's do this that'll go across a diagonal the piece on the outer side that pink piece if I've got these three corners that are looking to cycle the piece that's on the side will end up on the top so I'm going to do the exact same move there and we'll see the pink grey green will go into its position at the back Okay, that's complete. You can see there it is. So that's really what you want to remember, looking for pieces that roll along an edge or that are going to go across a diagonal where the colour you want to go on the top is on the side. 
I do want to find a corner that we can use for a normal corner piece series. Oh, look at this. Okay, this blue, orange, purple. That one, you can see the it needs to go over here and the blue colour is on the side. So we know that's going to go to here. The piece movement is going to be like this. So this will be a standard corner piece series. And to do this, we'll turn the upper face clockwise then our right face away, upper face anti-clockwise, left face away. Upper face clockwise, return right face, upper face anti-clockwise, return left face. And again, notice the edges haven't been touched. That corner is in its position. Uh, perhaps we'll find one more that we can do, and we'll skip ahead to the end with the last three. Let's see if I can find one. I reckon I can there. Yep, and you'll look, you'll notice. Let's see if I can do that. Um, no, in fact, I'll just show you the deal. The, the blue, orange, grey wants to go to that position, but to get it in that position, the grey is actually on the side. So if I put it there, it would place, but it would not orient. So I'm not interested in that. Uh, so I'll leave that one for now and look for another one. What have we got here? This is a good little... Yep, we'll do this one. Okay. So this green, blue, pink wants to go there. Now, it's not it's not correctly oriented to go across the diagonal. So I'm going to do a setup. I'm going to move it as one setup move to that face. I'm just going to turn it around and say, well, I now know that this piece can roll down that edge or it can roll across the back. That's the other the piece that's in this position will roll across the back like that. And you can see if it did that, it would correctly place. So here we go with our last corner piece series here for the moment. We're going to roll that to there, to there, cycle those three pieces, exactly the same moves. Here we go. That's in. You can see the green, blue, pink is in. We did do a setup move, so it's very easy to see what to do to put that back. You can see this whole thing is actually pretty painless. The hardest part is just finding a corner that will do what you want it to do. I'm going to skip ahead to the last three or four maybe and take it from there. Well, I've completely and utterly rejected my own advice and I haven't solved them in any kind of order. I've just solved them as they came. So now I've got one, two, three four corners left to do and they're all over the shop. So what I'm going to do is just try and place one of them initially and so I'm just looking to see if any of them are in vicinity of where they need to go. I guess that one needs to go there, that one needs to go there, this one needs to go right across here and the blue needs to go there. So I'm going to concentrate on maybe one of these two. So let's begin by turning this face around and seeing how it stacks up and that is nice. That means, and I don't have to remember that setup because it's just a single face turn. If you can't see it from there, you probably shouldn't be doing twisty puzzling. But anyway, we've got that sitting in that position to go there. Now that's good. That'll roll along that edge. What I need is a third piece there, and I don't care at the moment, so I'm just going to grab that piece and put it there. So really all I have to remember is the blue face clockwise. That's what I turned, the blue face clockwise, so I can undo that at the end. Now I'm going to go and place that grey, green, orange piece into its position. There we go, and you can see that's gone in nicely. What did I have to remember? Blue face was turned clockwise, so I've got to undo that, and then this I can go like that. Now that'll leave me with three corners left to go. One, two, the other one was over here. Now with the last three, you could get any kind of configuration. I've got no idea what I'm going to get here, so let's have a quick look. What I'm hoping is that 
that piece has its yellow sticker there so it can go across to a diagonal and I can then set up the third piece but that's not to be let's have a look if I do a setup like that I know that that now is in a position to roll down an edge that's good and again I don't need to remember that setup so I've got that piece ready to go there now the last piece the third piece all I need to think about is getting the third piece into this position so it will roll onto there the reason that I don't need to worry about that piece is that if that's going to be correct and this one is going to be correct that one will have to be correct there's no way I can end up with a single twisted corner so let's locate that third piece it's around here what we're desperately hoping is that we'll turn the green face and that third piece will roll that is incredible that is beautiful now as I said didn't plan that didn't know it was going to happen so what would you do if you turned it and it didn't go correctly in what you would need to be thinking is and this is where you may get a pen and paper and just write down some setup moves um, is something like turning this face here to change the orientation of the piece and then bringing it up and you can see that that has changed what's going on that's probably what you do and normally it's okay you can reasonably figure out what you've got to do there's only so many possibilities for that piece to be oriented there anyway uh, you might also if that didn't work you might instead of just turning it there you turn it there mark down that as a setup and then bring it around to here and that'll knock out that so it's going to involve just putting that out the way first and that's where even I would use pen and paper because I wouldn't want to stuff it up right at the end but as it is we've got lucky and we know that we can just turn that around into place as I said that's going to roll that is going to roll which means that piece will automatically go across and if you look at it you'll see that the blue color is on the outside and that blue color is going to come to the top and match with these blue edges so let's carry out our final corner piece series alright that's all done what were my setups well I had to turn this face back that way and then I had to turn this face back that's pretty clear to see and you can see that having done that that's placed and oriented all those corners and indeed the Terraminx has been solved